Hey, what's up everybody? This is Scott from Oven Fresh Sounds coming at you from Brooklyn, New York. In this video, I want to show you how I use M Auto Align. M Auto Align is a plugin that I use to get multi mic drum kits and instruments aligned and in phase. So let's dive in here. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please click subscribe below. I'd also like to thank Eric Passmore for providing the tracks we're mixing in this video. So, first thing I want to do here is to make sure all our tracks are in mono. We're going to explode the stereo overhead track into two mono tracks. Next, we're going to get a rough mix of the drum kit. What I'm going to do is match the close mics to the overhead mics using the overhead mic as a reference. Alright, so now we have a rough mix of the drum set. Next we're going to insert M Auto Line. So I'm going to use the left overhead mic as our reference for alignment and I'll insert the plugin as the first plugin on the chain. I'm going to start with the drum overhead preset and I'll run you through the settings. So the first setting is the group. In our case, our group is set as O. When we analyze, the plugin will analyze all the tracks in the group O together. And so next we have the algorithm and our algorithm is set to standard with phase. In this case, we want the plugin to align as well as check for phase. And the next setting is maximum delay. So in this case, the maximum our tracks are gonna move is 40 milliseconds. All right, so you can also adjust the noise floor, the high pass filter and the low pass filter. These are only used in the analysis and will not affect the audio. So I typically keep these settings at their default. All right, and now we're going to copy the plugin instance across all the drum tracks. In Reaper, what happens when you click and drag is that it copies all the plugin settings, so all these tracks will be in group O. All right, and now I want to set the left overhead track as a main track, so that means all the other tracks will be a slave to the overhead track. The first thing I like to try is to find a less busy part of the song, like a verse or a bridge, because what happens when you try to analyze in a chorus, you may have a drummer going at it on the cymbals causing a lot of cymbal wash. The high frequency cymbal wash confuses the plugin and has trouble picking up the transients from the close mics, meaning the kick, the snare, and the toms. So let's go a little deeper on this. We aren't really concerned about the phase relationships of the cymbals because the waves of the high frequency material are moving so fast, phase doesn't really come into play. However, the waves of low frequency material move significantly slower and are the most affected by phase relationships. So this is important for our kick, snare, and toms. The second thing I like to try to find is the section where all the close mics are playing. So when the plugin is analyzing the short time frame, it can pick up the kick, snare, and toms and align them effectively. We have a good tom fill right here that is preceded by some kick and some snare. So this is a good spot to start analyzing. I'm going to loop this section. So I'm going to go to the main track here on the left overhead. You can actually go to any track on group O and I'm going to loop the drums. You'll notice the graph display is showing the frequency cancellation. The blue graph is showing the approximate cancellation of each frequency, while the red graph is showing the approximate cancellations of each frequency weighted by their levels. So I typically pay most attention to the red graph, which is showing the more relevant cancellations. If everything was perfectly in phase, the graph would show a horizontal line at 0 dB. So if we take a look at what we're seeing here, we see the kick, we're getting some cancellation around 70 Hz and the snare it's around a lot of cancellation at 150 and then the tom somewhere in between there all right so i'm going to click analyze while the loop is playing all right so immediately you hear the low end is a lot more filled out you probably don't even need to use studio headphones to hear the difference but now you can see that the red graph is showing it's pretty close to zero right now all right, so let's go to a different section of the song and compare it to the original. All right, so in particular, I want you to listen to the low end of the kick and the snare. So when I bypass, listen to how those disappear. It's almost like you mute the kick and the snare. So, I mean, you can try to get similar results by boosting the low end of the kick and the snare, but it's really gonna be an uphill battle if your tracks are out of phase and alignment. So. I hope this demonstrates the importance of checking phase and alignment on your multi-miked instruments, and I hope you can use this to get better drum mixes. 
So I'll note that the results are not always going to be the same each time, so I recommend analyzing the tracks a few times and experiment with different sections of the songs. Even though the plugin is doing a lot of the work, you need to use your ears to find the sound that you like. So in a nutshell, this is how I use M Auto on. I'll post a link below where you can pick up the plugin. It usually runs around $50, but every week Melda selects five or so plugins and sells them for 50% off the regular price. So get on their mailing list and grab this plugin when it's on sale. So that's it. Please comment below. Let me know how you're using this plugin, or if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help you out. Click subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.